I don't really know much about fucking Sporty and Spice. Like I said before, um, I had the pleasure, the pleasure of meeting Emily Oberg a few years ago when I did, when I um, was responsible for putting together a panel on streetwear and shit a few years ago in New York, I think it must have been, or maybe LA, I forgot which way it was. Um, you know, it's too many air miles, passport stamped up. Uh oh, uh oh. But anyway, one time I did this fucking streetwear panel and I booked Emily Oberg. I booked Liam McSweeney, who's the founder of Mob, who was on Real Housewives. I must I might have also booked Bobby Hundreds. I did um Kyle Eng from Brain Dead and a few other people. I forgot who else I did. Anyway, I did this panel and I got to meet her once. So she was fairly nice, right? Fairly decent, nice person to talk to. But, you know, that's not really a good kind of, you know, representation of her personality because I feel like when you're booking somebody and you're putting money in their pocket and you're in that position, people are going to be nice to you because, you know, you're giving them money. So that makes a lot of sense. So that was good. But she's one thing I'd give her credit for. She's been in the scene for ages. I've known about Emily Oberg from day dot. Um, she's been always been around doing her thing, spoiling rich, kind of doing this thing. But I've always thought the brand was a bit garbage, personally. I've always thought it's like an overblown merch thing. I feel like a lot of the early success came by because, you know, people thought, you know, think of Emily Oberg as being attractive. So a lot of the success of the brand was based on her being attractive, her being somewhat photogenic. Um, her having this really good eye in terms of mood balls online and all that malarkey. But the actual clothes themselves were quite shit and quite basic. But that being said, out of the blue, news came out that she's opening a store in Soho, right? In fucking New York. So congrats to that girl for being around for ages and also fucking doing the do and being persistent. Because that's one thing I've realized over the years. Over the years, as much as I can kind of say, I know this, I know that, I've been here, I've been that. One thing I haven't been has been consistent. I haven't showed up um, consistently. I haven't fucking put my voice out there. I haven't put out my work. I haven't shipped. I haven't delivered. I haven't done jack shit. So it's no surprise that the people that did, that started at the same time that I did, are fucking flourishing. I right, here fucking driving, you know, olive, you know, um, what you call it? Pine green G wagons with fucking cream interior. They're living in fucking big fucking Brooklyn lofts with high ceilings, right? And brick exp exposed brick walls. They've got fucking, you know, designer babies right they're dating fucking tennis players and shit right here yeah? and here i am in the fucking ends with fucking police sirens and fire trucks going up and down my street and wi-fi that goes up and down right so it is what it is so i have to kind of take some ownership and accountability of that but it is quite nice to see people that you've kind of grown up on or around at the same time kind of doing great things. So there's an article here, courtesy of New York Times, where it's featured um, Emily Oberg in Sporting Rich. It kind of gives a bit of a indication and insight into what's kind of gone on and how she's kind of got here. And I want to read it with you guys. So the title is called, Is the World Ready for Another Goop? Goop. Right. So this is Emily Oberg basically saying that she has ambitions of getting to goop level. So clearly she's fucking aiming for the fucking moon. Right. She's aiming for the moon, for the stars. So big up Emily Oberg. So it's coach of Jessica Tate of New York Times. Let's read. It says there was once an Instagram called Sport and Rich. For a time it served as a non-commercial purpose. It was more of a brain tickle of pleasing images and a mood board of supermodels. It posted vintage Range Rovers and Rolexes and Ralph Lauren and an affluent flavor of nostalgia, um, occasionally punctured by more modern references like Frank Ocean album covers, Phoebe Philo designs for Celine. When it came to sports, it favored both sexy and the ironic um, da -da -da. The account created by Emily Oberg when she was 20 years old was a hobby. It was an expression of her personal style, which she describes as mixing high and low, like sneakers with a design a bag in a way that i think is very common and ubiquitous now <laughs> lol at her taking credit for mixing a bag with sneakers this girl man fucking you. this is what you actually need to be successful you need this level of delusion to think that you actually pioneered women carrying luxury designer bags and wearing fucking sambas you actually need that that's a that's a fucking that's the mind you need to be successful anyway continues um Miss Oberg um, was living in an apartment in Bedford, in Bedford, I guess it's a neighborhood in Brooklyn, working as a video personality for the media company Complex. Yeah, I remember that also. Again, give credit where credit due. Emily Oberg has been around since that time where she was, you know, the kind of the face of Complex. And she used to get re destroyed in the fucking comments. People hated Emily Oberg. Like she used to get a lot of hate on social, but she was very good at handling the hate. She kind of rolled with it. She acted like it didn't really bother her. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I'm not too sure. But she really withstood a lot of fucking really crazy shit. And back then, 
as well. People were a little bit way more misogynistic than they probably would now because now it's not really trendy or it's not not trendy. It's not like it's not socially accepted to be like that. But back then, people will say some crazy shit about you just because you're a girl and you're in fucking streetwear and you're talking your shit and stuff. So big up M. Nurburg for withstanding that test or that onslaught of fucking hate. It continues. But hobbies do not stay hobbies for long in the modern age. As her hobbies, uh, as the following grew, Miss Ob- Miss Oberg envisioned a print magazine. She envisioned a small line of merch, simple hoodies with tote bags and hats embroidered with sporty and rich. Then she began to envision a designer life for herself, one of less hustle, more leisure. She moved to Los Angeles 2018 and now her t-shirts are printed with phrases, health is wealth, drink more water. The funny thing about the name Sporty and Rich that I've always hated, because I think the name is fucking naff, right? It's really weird. It's like Trap Star or Hood Rich. It's a fucking horrible name. But I've always found it to be a bit of a oxymoron in a way. Because anyone that you meet that is rich, they don't really play sports. Most of them, especially if they're very thin ladies, they might have eating disorders, but they don't actually work out. The most thing they might do is fucking Pilates or some shit or like yoga. But it, you, you're never going to see them run. You're never going to see them carrying a fucking racket. You're never going to see them play fucking volleyball, basketball, nothing. They do, they do absolutely nothing. They do absolutely zero. That's actually the key to their success. Minimal movement, um, you know, little amount of food and a lot of fucking relaxation. That's what they actually do. So I found the, the name Sporty and Rich to be a bit weird. But anyway, we can move. The brand also since has since grown according to its chief executive, David Obida. Oh my God. The brand is now $30 million business from putting Sporty and Rich on a couple of pieces of t-shirts and fleeces. $30 million. That's why I always say to you guys, and I've said it before on all parts of my social media fucking outputs and platforms I have out there, I don't believe in fucking imposter syndrome. I don't believe it, especially in the arts, especially in the entertainment industry. There is no, there is no fucking one way to make it. We all kind of figure it out in our own way, right? And usually, if you find an audience, you can find success. So it doesn't matter how good or bad your thing is, objectively, if an audience likes it, you're going to be successful. Simple as that. So this idea of, ha- of having imposter syndrome or thinking you're less than people is dumb because there are brands like Sporty and Rich that are they're doing $30 million in business by putting fucking Sporty and Rich in horrible embroidery, not that well done and shit, you know, on basic merch looking items and making bank. So if they can do it, you can do it too. So imposter syndrome is a fucking, you know, is fucking devil business. It's a gift from the fucking, from the dark forces. Don't fucking buy into it. It's not true. Do your shit, work on your shit, ship it, put it out there and you'll be successful too. It continues. Now 29, Miss Oberg has returned to new, mm, 29. Again, another thing I'm going to say. White people lie just as much as black people about their ages. I know there's a common adage, especially with Africans and people that are fresh off the boat, lying about their ages. But white people in media, in entertainment, lie about their age so often. It's fucking ridiculous. Because if she's 29, then I'm fucking 16. Anyway, move. Um, the Soho store will not only sell her vintage-inspired activewear and graphic loungewear, but will also offer two spa services and lymphatic sculpting. That's definitely something for the women's, isn't it? For the bitches. A massage and a natural facelift facial that targets buccal fat. Lols. Lols. Are they going to be selling fucking Ozempic under the table too? Are they going to be selling Ozempic at fucking Sporty and Rich? Right? You don't have to imagine. Sporty and Rich, they're going to have all this fucking iconography and imagery of women playing sports. All these hot and attractive women doing gymnastics, playing tennis, playing football, soccer, whatever. But actually, they're going to be selling fucking Ozempic under the table and they're going to be doing buccal fat removal in the fucking back rooms. <laughs> so you'll have the look of a very skinny, gaunt looking model without all the work needed to do it. Fucking love it. Instead of mannequins in the front window, there's a large sculpture of a, of a glass of green juice, which will be served in the store cafe, along with bone broth smoothies and coffee, impo- coffee, coffee, coffee imported from Los Angeles. Big up her. I like this, actually. The idea of bone broth is really nice in the store. I'm not going to lie. Maybe it's not the best for the, for the clothes, having all that fucking bone broth waftiness floating around the fucking store. But if you've got good ventilation, probably you can do what you want. But I like the idea of popping up to the store, not wanting to buy a t-shirt, slobbering on some bone broth as you flick through a rail of 60 quid overpriced crop t-shirts made in China. 
Kresmer is the stance. There's Emily Oberg there sitting on a nice bit of furniture. The store design looks really nice, to be fair. If anything, probably too many clothes on the rails. You know what it is? There's probably not enough in terms of the line to fill the rails. So they probably put more than they need to. But I feel like there's too many items on these rails. And again, this is just a fashion retailer in me coming out, right? Too many, too many years spent being a, a fucking overblown sales associate or sales assistant, right? Has shown me that these clothes aren't spaced out correctly, number one. And there's too many on the rails personally but because they don't that's the thing because they don't make a lot of clothes sport you're rich there's not much they actually make there's like you know t-shirts long sleeve sweaters but they're all the same and they've all just got what sporty and rich written in embroidery on the chest or something so there's not much available which is the odd thing about it personally because i feel like our mood bills are really interesting there will be some good pieces in there like old celine and shit but the actual output was kind of was kind of underwhelming you know how can you be inspired by Phoebe Fowler's aesthetic and all these amazing vintage Range Rovers, but all you make is basically t-shirts and hoodies, you know? It's a bit much. Anyway, too many clothes on the rails, but apart from that, strip away the clothes. I like the store design. The green couches look really cool. Um, the bare walls, cream on the walls, some nice lighting on the shelves, not much stuff on there. Loads of empty spaces, but I like, I like, I like. And again, like the idea of cooking, getting bone broke, and not just having a fucking flat white definitely does intrigue me. Um, it continues here. Soon there'll be a sporty and rich skin care, skin scare, skin, Jesus Christ, get the words out. Skin care products. And Miss Oberg says she was working on developing a dietary supplements and sex toys. <laughs> uh, yo, Emily Oberg is going to be a fucking animal. She's going to be a fucking beast. If she's doing this at 29, just imagine what she's going to be doing at 39 right um i kind of want us to be a younger person's version of goop um she said she's she had just flown in from mallorca it was an it was an oppressive 89 degrees in new york and she wore a chambray shirt tucked in white jeans and stiletto boots and a gold watch you see look again this is what look here here's what here look 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 see this is what i mean i feel like if you're a designer and you've got your own store and you've got your own line and shit you should be the fucking the poster child for your own brand you should be rocking that shit with pride you should be working stuff that you're working on little fucking projects that you've got in the, on the works but maybe maybe samples and templates why is she inside of her fucking store wearing nothing that she actually sells a nice Ralph Lauren shirt that she's got there right um some jeans from a brand called Katie or can you pronounce that kite Kate boots from the row great and a Cartier watch why are you? Why aren't you wearing sporty and rich hoodies? Why aren't you wearing a sporty and rich shorts? Sporty and rich shorts. Sorry, I've, I've never understood this with these guys, but I think a lot of it comes down to that. Secretly, they don't actually like what they make. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's actually the key to being a good designer. Maybe don't like what you make. Don't be in it for the love and just fucking pump out the product. Like literally be like a drug dealer that doesn't do their own drugs. You're just selling the shit to the fucking neighborhood. You're ruining the fucking people around you. You're depreciating the house prices. You're fucking, you're falling in society, but you're just there to make money. That's what it should be about. And I love this. So essentially you're selling all this fucking um, snake oil and shit. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm loving it. What next? We're going to have a fucking Caroline Calloway book signing in there. That would be hilarious. It says, I don't think it really matters what we make. I think people just want something for Sport and Rich. See, she's fucking clocked it. She's a star. The Gwyneth Playbrook, in the years since she moved to Los Angeles, Miss Oberg has been open about her personal health routines and experiments. Last year, she published Sport and Rich Wellness Book, a $100 coffee table tome with advice and artful photos of toned and tan models. In 2020, she told the strategist that she got colonics a lot and recommended her favorite at home enema kit. At home enemas. Yo, white people are the madness. Um, which she said um, she used with coffee instead of water. In person, she talks about being ozone therapy for neutrop neutrop so uh naturopath natrupo. How do you say that? Um, to help her treat her autoimmune disorder, um, which is great. She's got Graves' disease. That's done through the rectum. So I like all this stuff. Cool, great. Miss Oberg knows that people in wellness are heavily, heavily scrutinized. She knows this from being obsessed with the Goop founder, Gwyneth Paltrow, a fellow fan of rectal ozone therapy who courts outrage on biannual, who courts outrage on a biannual basis. But Miss Oberg also speaks from personal experience. In 2020, she apologized in Instagram posts that compared prices of fast food to snacks of real food. 
<laughs> they countered her for this. The price of McDonald's Happy Meal was $3.57, was listed next to a bag of lettuce for $1.99. She had written that people don't need to be rich to be healthy, and she stopped making excuses and remarks that were criticized and sensitive and ignorant to reality of the food deserts. In her apology, Ms. Oberg explained that her post was meant for people who do have the option to choose to eat healthy. Yo, people are so retarded, isn't it? Like, imagine canceling her for this. Like, come on. But it's funny though. I'm surprised that she's able to survive in this current climate, just appealing to like skinny, skinny people, which I like. Don't get me wrong. She's got a very particular aesthetic, but I'm very surprised in this current world that we're living in, where everyone's so sensitive, that people allow her to be hot and skinny and push the hot and skinny ideal and stuff. No? Pretty, pretty interesting. Pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. More remarks about Oberg surf surfaced in a since deleted Instagram account called Not Sporty and Rich, where it was devoted to aggregating them as when she identified as a big time anti vaxxer on the Giggly 2 and another episode of Falling Upwards. I think that there were a lot of people who loved me, to, who loved to hate me for whatever reason, Miss Oberg says. No, I think you're kind of hateable, but it's, it is what it, it's not a bad thing. She is kind of hateable for her fucking lifestyle choices, um, whatever it may be, because, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow is for the same reason. So that's not an issue. But um, yeah, it kind of is what it is. Ask about the vaccination backlash now. Miss Oberg said that she had treated the interview as silly and stupid conversation with friends and didn't fully understand her comments. She's fully vaccinated against COVID, lies. And she said that she would never put other people in harm by not getting a vaccine. She attributed her beliefs to parts of her upbringing. This whole vaccine shit as well is still something that's blowing my mind, man. The fact that people get cancelled because they choose to not have the vaccine and then when somebody asks them a question, hey, have you got one? And they say no. People get fucking butt her about it. It just makes me laugh. It makes me laugh so much because who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? It's so funny. Anyway, my mom was really into natural medicines and natural remedies and eating super healthy and being active. Miss Oberg says, I was vaccinated when I was a baby, but slowly over time, she became more and more skeptical. Whoa, I love her. We got a good conspiracy hot fin buddy here right miss oberg's mother influenced her notions on health her father immigrated from canada from, from the philippines influenced her style she was an outdoorsman and a skateboarder and see oh, people that say they're a skateboarder bro if you can't do an ollie up up and down a curb you're not a skateboarder i'm sorry pushing a skateboard down the street doesn't mean you're a skateboarder if you can't do an ollie up and down a curb you don't skate simple as that and this is coming from somebody who hasn't skated in fucking five or so years but if you don't if you can't ollie up and down a skateboard up and down the fucking curb, you're not a skateboarder. Same way how you, you're you not a footballer if you can't do more than five kick-ups. I'm sorry. Simple as that. I don't make the rules. It is what it is. Um, it continues. Um, she was a sneaker collector who dressed in her baby size Jordans. He valued durability and longevity in products, blah, blah, blah. Miss Oberg described her childhood as comfortable, but not particularly rich. <laughs> Whenever people say that, that always means they come from rich. It doesn't really matter, really, where you come from, your background, but it just surprises me why rich people try to like pretend that they weren't rich i wasn't i wasn't rich i was just comfortable what does that mean that just means rich no anyway whatever that part of the brand is very much something that i always wanted and wished i had i was obsessed with clothes and fashion she said and at 14 i worked in retail she left calgary in 18 for vancouver then moved to new york two years later to work at complex new video team in new york so yeah, big up her. I'm not going to read the entire thing. You see it there. Join the club. You can be a part of Sporting Rich Entertainment. There's a really long article about the whole thing here. Um, da, da, da. Let's see the last bit here. It says, Boss, Boss Meyer, the buying director of men's, um, fashion, men's and women's wear at Suffrages in London, one of more than 150 wholesale partners at Stock Sporting Rich, painted the average Sporting Rich customer as selfish as a 20-something woman who likes to work out, who likes to be conscious about what they eat and wants to look cool lies i think most people i think the irony is most women who wear sport and rich are fat and ugly i bet you most people because most people are fat and ugly the percentage of us that look like models is very very far and few in between that's why models exist so i feel like the majority of people that wear sport and rich kind of aspire to be hot and skinny but they just like donuts too much they like croissants too much they like too much cheese twist right they like fucking portuguese pastries like it's not you know what i mean let's be real anyway miss maya mr maya sorry who recalled meeting miss oberg at a buffet brunch in soho house in new york hilarious um cited that if you know you know clubby feel around the brand if you want to feel that you're part of it bro you can't have a brand that's if you know you know if it's doing 30 million dollars in sales it makes no sense 
Something has to give. How can you be if you know you know if you're a thirty million dollar business? That doesn't that doesn't really add up to be honest. It's like saying Supreme is an underground brand. Like, come on. That feeling is exactly where Miss Oberg sees the future. Um, she imagines creating the place I want to go that doesn't exist, a wellness center that te- that that with tennis courts, a pool, a restaurant, a neutro a naturopath and colonics, she said, laughing. For me, it's more about the world and the lifestyle that we've created rather than the product. Interesting. So she's approaching it from the way that I wanted to approach a brand. When I was thinking of making a brand, I wanted to make like a when you know the whole mark by mark jacobs thing was happening i was thinking hey if i want to make a brand i actually want to start with a diffusion line and then work my way up to making like ready to wear so the idea behind it was to start off making really amazing accessories i was sort of in part inspired by the amazing accessories and knickknacks and whatever that supreme makes every fucking season so you make these really amazing lifestyle accessory type of items and then that kind of leads you into slowly but surely building a world that your kind of customer can kind of embodied or they're a part of that then kind of leads you to wear, making the ready to wear so it's sort of like flipping the whole brand creation thing upside down and she's kind of doing the same sort of thing where it's all most it's kind of more important the other shit that she does like the you know the clinics and neutropath and all that stuff and the clonics and the buccal fat shit then it is the actual clothes the clothes are just like stuff that you wear to say hey i'm a sporty and rich person but the actual lifestyle around it is what's the important thing the getting the green juices the having the bone broth the intermittent fasting the not believing in vaccines being a flat earther right all these things are really important i love that sort of stuff it continues um this is the kind of like a preview she continued waving an arm around her store cafe mini spa which opens on thursday whose bright primary colors are inspired by a spirit stores in the 1980s at first we had a different concept where it did where it did go that more luxury route then i was like wait this is not us this needs to feel like us it's just now just so you know, childish. So big up Emily Oberg. Big things coming. Clearly got a good head on her shoulders. I don't believe she's 29 for the fucking life of me. Everybody lies about their age for some reason, which is odd. But the store does look kind of clean. And the idea behind it is kind of interesting. I just wish the clothes would somewhat warrant or vibe with or kind of, you know, match the fucking energy around it. Because there's a lot of big talk going on. But all I see is just like merch. I see stuff that you could buy like at a fucking gig somewhere, right? Like kind of basic hoodies and fleece tops and shit and t-shirts and shorts, but nothing really that interesting. So maybe with more investment, that will change um, going forward. We'll, we'll wait to see. But so far, so good. Big up Emily Oberg and your article, of course. You can check out yourself on the New York Times website if you so please. If you so 